What are you doing? Well, where are the winners? Oh my God, it's Keystone How? Cops. How are we supposed to know? <sighs> oh. Welcome to your PWC Connections, a monthly look at Fayetteville's hometown utility, the Public Works Commission of the City of Fayetteville. I'm Courtney Lucas. And I'm Nicole Stiff. Happy New Year. We're so glad you are back with us for another year of PWC Connections. It's become a beloved tradition of ours to look back at some of our best segments over the past year. We say it every year, Courtney, don't we? Every single year. It's so hard trying to narrow down the list because let's be honest, all of our segments featured on PwC Connections are pretty great. They're fantastic. But we did it, and now it's time to announce the winners of 2016. Our first award goes to the best inside PwC of 2016. It's fitting that this segment is a best of award winner because it's about an award, the RP3 Award. The RP3 Award, the, the acronym stands for Reliable Public Power Provider. It's a designation from the American Public Power Association for utilities that distinguish themselves in the way that they carry out their operations. Applicants are evaluated in four fairly broad areas. Reliability, safety, workforce development, and system improvement. Within each one of these areas, there are smaller divisions for things like how well you plan for succession of your workforce, how well you keep up with your reliability indices on your outages, and, and more than just keeping up with them, how well you react to those and make changes accordingly. An important one also is how well you're investing in your system to improve the infrastructure and repair or replace aging equipment. The application for the RP3 award is judged by an 18-member panel of actual utility employees who serve for a three-year period to evaluate the applications. They come from a cross-section of large and small utilities throughout the United States. Number one, I think any time you are judged by your peers in a competition, that makes it more meaningful because you know that the folks that are making the decisions have really had their boots on the ground and been in the situations that you faced yourself. Secondly, it is an award for American Public Power Association, and unlike OSHA and a lot of other indices, it really is among the public power family who looks to provide power in the most economical basis to small towns and communities all over the United States. So it really makes you feel good when your peers and those who have the same common objectives that you have see the need to reward you in this manner. There are about 2,000 public power utilities in the United States. Uh, we're up against uh, organizations as big as the Los Angeles Department of Water Power and some, some of the smaller towns in North Carolina like Rocky Mountain Wilson also have an opportunity to apply. The levels of the award are gold, platinum, and diamond, with diamond being the highest level. We have received that award now four times, and we are one of only three utilities, public power utilities, in the United States that have received that diamond level award four times. The award benefits customers in a couple of ways. When we have to issue bonds, by being able to tell the bond rating agencies that we have been recognized for this level of performance, it gives them confidence that we're a well-run operation, that we will be in business for a long time, and is considered when they determine the rate at which the bonds will be delivered to us. Secondly, when we go out to get insurance on our property and our personnel, if we've got an excellent safety record and if it's been recognized by a peer group like the American Public Power Association, that goes a long way to keeping our insurance rates low. And to the extent that we don't have to spend more money on bond financing or more money on insurance, that directly affects our rates. I think it's important to recognize the employees because without the individual efforts of the employees, we would not receive the award. We couldn't fill out the application without the training records that are maintained by our Human Resources Department. We couldn't complete the computerized input without the assistance from our IS or IT department. That's a big part of it. 
all of the folks who, fleet maintenance, who keeps our trucks up and running and keeps them available so that we can go out and respond to outages. Without their support, the trucks wouldn't be available, it would take us longer to get there, and our statistics would not be nearly as good as they are. So there's a lot of people across the board, not to mention our management, who supports everything that we need to be able to respond, gives us the tools, the, the training that we need to be able to respond and to display the performance that results in this kind of recognition. I'm proud because I know the challenges that we face in times like storms, outages, of getting our people out and getting our people in the right places to get the power back on. I'm proud of the efforts that all of our folks take in buying new equipment and upgrading the equipment that we have. I'm proud of the training that they go through in order to keep their, their skills home. And most importantly, I think I'm proud of the way every time someone goes out to do their job on a crew or even by themselves, they're thinking about being as safe as they can possibly be. And that, to me, means that these folks are very serious about their performance and it makes me proud to know that they can be recognized. Courtney, I am so excited to announce that our next winning segment features members of our community advisory group. The CAG helps bridge the gap between customers and PwC and they also provide valuable feedback. We love our CAG and we hope you love this segment. Enjoy! I decided to join the uh, CAG to get involved with the community to find out what PwC was all about and their uh, process as far as doing things. I heard about the uh, CAG from two friends, one who was employed at PwC and one who was on the group before I came on it. I've learned all about the treatment plants, the water plants, uh, the workings as far as the people, and I really enjoyed it, good people. We have been through a transition period where we got a new president, Mr. Blanchard left, and now we have a new one. And uh, we have discussed almost every detail or every situation or problem that PwC has had and uh, I feel like we've done a good job of selling a lot of things. It has in increased my appreciation for PwC because I was not aware of all that they did as far as everyday work uh, on their lines, on sewer, water, treatment plants, uh, like the plant in Eastover. I had no idea it was there and I've been around Eastover all my life. And uh, it has really helped me to learn the involvement that PwC has with the community. I want to try to stay on the CAG as long as I possibly can. I decided to join first uh, because somebody actually told me about it, uh, a really good friend, and then he recommended me to be a part of it. Then I was like, okay, why not? You know, it's a way to give back to the community, and I'm serving in the military anyway, so, and um, I look at it this way that by joining, I can be the voice for, for the community that I'm part of, so it's a good opportunity. I have a different perspective about PwC and most of the uh, energy company in this community, but uh, coming in, I was able to basically see how involving uh, PwC uh, is in the community in the way, you know, the effort they actually put in forth to help customers understand what they do and how they bring in values to the community, so which is quite important, you know, important and I find that very valuable and I'm learning as I'm going to. It's good to serve anyway, so apart from, you know, we're going to take this uniform off one day, but it's good to serve the community and join the CAG just give you the opportunity, so why not? And my favorite part is basically being able to go to different plants that you guys have is, is a really eye-opener for me. So, yeah, I love that, like going on a trip. You know, it's like going on a field trip when I was in high school, so it's kind of like cool. I've been on the uh, AD for really about a year and a half. I thought it would be interesting that I wanted to learn more where my electricity and not my water, but my electricity comes from and the other things and where my bills were going to. 
In fact, I'm currently in one of the subdivisions that has the septic problem uh, and they're working on right now. And uh, they've been redoing my whole front yard. And hopefully it will be good. <laughs> and so I have high hopes and they've, done, they've been fantastic about it because uh, I leave my house approximately 10 times a day and they stop all their work and put down, in fact, one time they not only filled in holes, they actually took and created a bridge so I could drive back into my house. <laughs> so, so I was quite impressed with that, so they were more than willing to help out. And I've been on a couple of their little field trips where they've introduced me to how the, I call them the switchboards because I'm in the dinosaur category, <laughs> but uh, how the operates when calls come on in, also on the different types of electricity used in the bulb. And I can actually explain some of that to my neighbors who are actually willing to listen. When I hear the big boom now when we have a thunderstorm, I don't get too worried because I know it's not a transformer going out. <laughs> I used to think that, oh, there goes the whole electricity and we're all done for, you know. But now I know, oh, that's going to be fixed and that's just a little relay and one of the little things up there. I think it would be a great experience for them and it would actually broaden their understanding and they would understand a lot more of the things that are provided and where the money is actually being spent and the way that they can influence how the money is being spent. And I hope to be on the CAG for quite a while more so I can give them the benefit of my wisdom and learn from them. I'm on my second year of the CAG. I decided to volunteer my time to serve because of uh, proud of my hometown utility. Where I feel like PwC is very responsive to to needs of the community, and I wanted to learn more about the inner workings. I've learned a lot about um, the the reclamation processes, going on those tours, the emergency center was pretty fascinating, learning about all that. There is someone always on call, on duty. You know, you flip on that light switch, you, you don't think where it's coming from, but somebody's here or there somewhere, making sure that that power's there, that water's there. And there's so much more that you're getting for your money when you pay your bill. You think you're just paying for water and you think you're just paying for electricity, but there's so much more that PwC does with your money and gives back to the community, and I think that's really great. I have really enjoyed meeting the leadership of PwC, um, Steve Blanchard when he was here, and then David Trago. I couldn't have picked a better replacement for Steve. That was a very smooth transition, I think a wise choice. I would certainly advise um, someone to join the PwC CAG group. It's um, very worthwhile and you learn a lot. I love my hometown utility. <laughs> Choosing the best How Does It Work of 2016 was no easy feat. I can't imagine. We've had the opportunity to learn a lot about the inner workings of our utility in this segment. From lift stations to elevated water tanks and everything in between, we have a newfound appreciation of how things work around here. Absolutely. Our most popular HDIW segment is about electric substations. Ooh. Find out how it works next. You may wonder what an electric substation is. Well, I'm about to tell you what a substation does. You may have seen these fenced-in areas before on our system. Well, a substation uh, takes in uh, higher voltage electricity, and we step it down to lower voltage electricity, but it's still high voltage. And substations are very dangerous to the public, so that's why you'll see a fence around them. So we try to keep the uh, general public out, and only people know what they're doing to be in them. We have uh, approximately 32 substations. Substations are a critical part of the electric grid. Uh, they have to perform that step in the voltage down so we can get the wire eventually insulated at the house for uh, safety of, of, of the public. But substations play a key role to, to providing power uh, throughout America and at the Fayetteville PwC.
We use a computer system, and in, in, in a substation world, we call it supervisory control and data acquisition. It's a big word, and we've shortened it to the word SCADA. And that system monitors all our equipment and gives us alarms if an event happens in a piece of equipment, and we're able to monitor the power flow, and we're actually able to control breakers by opening and closing them. Well, a typical day of a substation employee can uh, vary from day to day, but we uh, check those alarms that come off of our SCADA system to verify uh, what they are and then we'll correct any of those uh, that are correctable and then we also uh, will perform maintenance daily on equipment. Uh, anything from doing breaker tests, doing transformer tests, to doing relay, uh, protective relaying testing to make sure everything stays in compliance and is working uh, the best it's supposed to work. Well, power outages, if there's an event out there, a tree falls on the line, a car hits a pole, a poor squirrel gets electrocuted on a transformer, whatever it is, uh, may trip a circuit breaker out back at a substation. And if that happens, then whole subdivisions go out of power. So we get that alarm at our dispatch center. They'll dispatch the crews out. We get a crew inside the substation to assist the linemen working on the power lines at the same time. And they'll let us know when things are all clear and we'll close that breaker back in. Everything inside the substation to me is cool, but the new automation and the relaying and the uh, uh, computer stuff that we're using today uh, and that we can replay events and uh, just the information we can gather now is, is very incredible about the substation. And that's how it works. I really like that sweater, Courtney. Like I love it. You're not tired of looking at it? No. I wore it in November, in December, and now in January. And it's still just as sparkly as ever? I am. Have you noticed mine? I, how can I not? May I? Of course. Of course. Yeah. So I won the <laughs> ugly Christmas sweater contest at work and I've just not been able to take it off since. And you'll you notice, I think Santa's getting bigger and bigger <laughs> from all the holiday eating and he's it. eventually just gonna spill out, which is a wonderful segue into our next winning segment. We took a field trip to Glenville Lake for this top segment to get an update on the spillway project. And you're probably asking yourself, what in the world is a spillway? Well, let's take another look at the new spillway and learn about the benefits it will provide in another winning PwC Connections segment. Sounds good. The spillway and the dam is a part of our water supply system. Uh, our primary supply is the Cape Fear River. However, the uh, series of four lakes on Little Cross Creek do provide additional uh, source water. Uh, the Glenville Lake Dam is the lower of the four dams and is the location of the primary intake structures. Uh, the Glenville Lake is fed by the three other lakes. Uh, the dam and spillway create the impoundment for which uh, the water can be diverted into the plant or pumped into the plant. The Glenville Lake Dam and Spillway is, a, is an old structure uh, originally built in the early 1900s in some shape and fashion. We're not sure exactly what existed back then. In the 1940s, mid 40s, it was reconstructed to pretty much what you see now. So the existing dam has been here since the 40s. And um, with anything else, with age, you begin to show signs of deterioration. We noticed some, some um, cracks in the spillway, some other deterioration that caused concern. Uh, because of the importance to the overall water supply for the city, uh, it was determined that it was time to invest in uh, replacing the spillway and ensuring the, uh, the future stability of the dam and thus the dependable water supply. Construction began in August of 2014. They were completed uh, back in mid to early January. Uh, there are some remaining punch list items, some dress up and clean up, stabilization of some of the disturbed areas 
Uh, but for all practical purposes, the, the spillway construction has been completed. The only difference you'll see is the, the beige areas in the background uh, that has been seeded. That's earth portions that has been seeded. And uh, the difference will be that will be nice and green, hopefully in the next 60 to 90 days. Uh, but uh, the actual spillway structure will look the same. It's our intention to uh, begin filling the lake uh, sometime in March. Uh, there's uh, various things that that's dependent on, but uh, the intent is to, uh, is to close the gates and begin refilling the lake in March. Uh, soon thereafter, in coordination with uh, the State Wildlife Resources Commission, we will be uh, bringing fish in to restock the lake. Depending on the amount of rainfall we get, the lake uh, can fill up anywhere within just a couple of days to maybe a week or 10 days. Uh, just depends on how much uh, rainfall we get. But uh, we are required to release a certain amount of water to maintain the flow in the creek. So we'll maintain that flow in the creek and also begin filling the lake. On average, I would say 10 to 15 days to fill it up. Fishing can resume uh, immediately following the uh, restocking. Uh, we have verified that with the Wildlife Resources Commission. There are certain species that uh, will not be stocked immediately that will require a delay, but what the initial restocking uh, with the species that will be used, fishing can resume immediately. Uh, PwC does have a, an aggressive maintenance and inspection program, so we will be monitoring it routinely. So we, we expect it to last uh, 50 years or, or better. The customers probably won't see a big difference in, uh, in their service. Behind the scenes, what it does is, is provide uh, security as far as the water supply and maintains the lake system as a viable component of our water supply. The average citizen probably doesn't realize uh, that where the water comes from and therefore really won't notice any difference in, in uh, their service. If a citizen has any questions or concerns regarding the, uh, the, the lakes and dams, uh, they can just call the normal PwC number and their call will be routed to the appropriate party that can, can answer that question. The average American wastes about 30 gallons of water a day. By doing just a few small things like turning off the water while washing dishes, or using less water washing the car, or brushing your teeth, or taking shorter showers, you can make a big difference in conserving our community's precious water supply. When we use less, we waste less. Power, water, conserve, PWC. The time has come to announce the winner of our final Best of Award. The Best Dear Gabby of 2016 answers our most asked question of the year. It involves food, one of my favorite subjects. Um, what, did, you, did you bring the popcorn? No. Oh gosh. It's okay, we can go on. This is, oh, okay. It involves food and power outages. We'll leave you with another look at this winning segment and see you back here next month for an all new edition of PwC Connections. Marge, I can't do lunch? No, I've got a beauty appointment. I mean, you don't get beautiful like this just overnight. I mean, well, in my case, it could take days. <laughs> but it does take five or six hours to make my hair look this good. Okay, well, then we'll do lunch tomorrow. I should be ready by then. Okay, I, sorry. I'm sorry, I gotta go. Hi there. Sorry, I was on my phone with my friend, but 
It's time for us to, to read some of the wonderful letters that we get from all of our PWC fans out there. Millions pouring in every week. And we just pick one at random, like this one, and see if we can answer it. Dear Gabby, I'm curious. When the power goes out, how long will my food last in the fridge before it goes bad? Do I need to throw out things like milk, eggs, and produce? Not wanting to toss my tomatoes, Tom. <laughs> Tom, that's cute. Dear Tom, you keep your tomatoes and the like. During an outage, it's important to remember to keep your refrigerator and freezer doors closed as much as possible to maintain the cold temperature. A refrigerator should keep food cold for four hours if the door is kept closed. So don't run every five minutes to the kitchen and look in to see if things are rotting yet. And a full freezer should hold its temperature for up to 48 hours. Now here's a pro tip for you. If you know bad weather's coming our way, say a hurricane or an ice storm, go ahead and fill containers such as milk cartons with water and freeze them. If the electricity goes out, you'll have blocks of ice in your fridge and freezer to help maintain cold temps. Here's some more good news for you. PWC is a reliable public power provider. <laughs> Say that fast three times. Which means that when the lights go out, our linemen work quickly and diligently to restore service. Most outages last less than an hour. Aren't our linemen the greatest? <laughs> You keep those cards and letters coming. Tune in again for your PWC connections on Fay TV 7. And remember, you can always catch your favorite show on the PWC website, FAYPWC.com, or on our YouTube channel. Till next time, I'm Gabby. And uh, more power to you.